Hi, English 111. So I want to spend just a little bit of time introducing the cause and effect essay, which is your next essay. This essay and the next one, these are the last two of the semester, they are both required to use academic research. So that's why in this week um, in, in Moodle, I've posted the video that shows how to use the uh, library's online resources through my SCC to find academic sources. Academic sources are those written by experts for other experts. So that eliminates a lot of different types of sources that we might use in research. So it eliminates general websites because those are not written by experts for other experts. Very rarely are they. Um, it eliminates magazines and newspapers because those are not written for experts in whatever field it is. Uh, those are written for a really general audience. So those are not considered academic. So academic sources are typically found um, in articles that have been published in journals. Journals are a little different from magazines. They do get published on a regular basis like a magazine and it has articles in it like a magazine but they aren't written for a general audience. You're not gonna find them you know, in the checkout line at Ingalls or anything like that. Um, instead, journals are read by professionals within a certain field. They will read their field's journals. For example, the uh, Journal of the American Medical Association. Most physicians and doctors are members of the American Medical Association, and so they read that journal. Uh, when it's published, they take a look at it to see what people are researching, um, what other professionals in that field are thinking about. And so nearly every single professional field has its own journal or journals where professionals in that field can write and read the different types of research that are um, going on in that particular field. Those are academic sources. So for this particular essay, because it has to do with language and language change, you might be looking at journals that are from a psychological perspective, perhaps published by the APA or something like the Journal of um, uh, pediatric psychology or something like that. So it might be from a psychology perspective. You might be looking at journals from a sociology perspective, um, of course, a linguistic perspective, maybe even education journals. So these are very specific kinds of sources, and I want you to start practicing how to find them and how to use them. So one of the things we're going to do next week is we're going to play around with finding specific sources in those databases in the, uh, the video that I showed earlier in this particular week. So this essay is going to use research, so let's talk about cause and effect. Um, to replace my whiteboard, I have created this very awesome drawing. So um, cause and effect is probably easiest to think about in terms of a timeline. So if we think about the topic or whatever it is that we are analyzing, if we go backwards in time and we ask why did this happen or why does this happen, we are looking at causes. If we look at our topic and we go forward in time, then we're saying, well, what, what are the effects of this thing that is happening? And if you look in your textbook on page 340, yeah, 340 and 341, uh, the writer describes three different ways that you can use cause and effect. One is to go just simply causes, ignore effects. So if my topic is, um, uh, the way slang changes very quickly in our society, then I might write about, well, why? Why does it change so quickly? Um, celebrities use it. Um, social media kinds of patterns or trends. Um, different generational interests or generational concerns. So if, if I'm asking why, those are probably pretty good causes for why slang happens and why it changes so quickly. That thing gives me plenty to kind of go onto those databases and start researching. So that's one way, just do causes. Another way is to just do effects. 
So the reading that you're taking notes on this week has to do with language change and the fact that young women are often the um, generators of that language change. So I might say, okay, uh, the, the way young women communicate with each other, what are the effects of that? Well, one might be um, a change in uh, grammar, might be a change in the way things are being sent over text messages or Snapchats or whatever. Um, it might be a way that friendship circles form. You know, so that's another direction. I could do just effects. The third way is to do kind of a combination. You can do it as a chain. This causes this, which causes this, which causes this. That's one way to do it. Or you can say, here's my topic. Here are a couple of causes. And here are a couple of effects that might happen because of that topic, because of whatever it is. Here's an example. So let's say my topic, this is not about language. Let's say my topic is um, wildfires. Um, there's a lot of causes of wildfires. Um, I lived through a couple of wildfires. Uh, when I lived in Montana, we had a very bad wildfire season. Folks in California deal with it all the time. So wildfire, what are some causes? Well, most of the time it's lightning, uh, but a, another cause might be drought that causes everything to be dry so that lightning can set a fire. Um, it might be human behavior because maybe we have these enormous piles of brush or we haven't cleaned around our property and it fuels a fire and so suddenly it gets out of control and it's a wildfire. So there are all kinds of different causes that I could say, well, why do wildfires happen? Wildfires then cause a lot of effects, right? They are incredibly expensive. It's hard to fight wildfires without money, um, especially enormous ones that are asking these firefighting crews to come from all over the United States and sometimes all over the world. Um, so uh, the effects on um, finances, which then might have another effect of a government raising taxes in order to pay for that wildfire protection or that wildfire um, extinguishing, you know, that sort of thing. Um, they, another effect of wildfire, so what might happen, uh, might have to do with just utter devastation of a town. An entire town that was destroyed in California a couple years ago, a town called Paradise, oddly enough. Um, so it causes people to have to move, to find housing elsewhere, maybe to find other jobs. So those, those are some interesting effects of wildfires. So I could do really anything with that kind of essay. I could focus just on the causes if I want to get really deep into that. I could focus just on the effects if I wanted to get really deep into that. Or I could do a little bit of both, like I just did. So for your cause and effect essay, think in this kind of organiza um, organization style where you are asking these kinds of questions. Why and what causes and effects? On page 342 in your textbook, there's an interesting paragraph that I want you to read that talks about actual causes or actual effects and possible causes and possible effects. Actual causes and actual effects are the ones that we, we know exist. Possible, um, we're not sure about, but we can take an educated hunch about. So they're useful to talk about too. For example, if I were to talk about um, self-quarantine during, let's say, COVID-19, what are some possible effects of that? Well, we don't know all of the effects yet because we're still living it. However, it is a good idea to start thinking about what some effects might be. So what are some possible effects of all of this self-isolation or self-quarantine? Um, we know that there are effects physically. We know there are effects on mental health. We know there are effects on our economy. But what are some other possible effects? How far out could we maybe think and, and brainstorm to see what some of those effects might be? So actual and possible. Both are worth thinking about um, and researching. And then the other thing on page 342 in your text has to do with remote causes or effects and more proximate, you know, more immediate. So for example, the wildfire. Immediate cause may be lightning. Lightning strike, the fire began. But let's go further back in time. Let's go a little bit more remote. 
and we can start to see other causes that leads up to that lightning strike and the wildfire, things like drought or improper land management or forest management that just hasn't been done correctly. So we can go further back in time. We obviously can go further in the future as well. So immediate effect of the wildfire, things burn down. More remote effect of the wildfire, taxes may go up. So immediate and remote are also valid and valuable ways to be thinking about cause and effect. So I want you to take the um, take a few moments to read the assignment sheet really carefully because it outlines everything. There's a rubric there as well. It shows you how I'm going to be grading it. So take a few moments to do that and start brainstorming some topics. I'm going to be talking more about possible topics next week. So we're going to put together kind of how to do research and how to use it and then some possible topics. And, and maybe I'll um, show how to research some of those topics as well so that you can start kind of playing around with it. Play around with the databases. You know, hop on there, click around. You're not going to hurt anything. Um, and just get used to using it. It's a really helpful tool, and you should be using it in your other classes as well as you move forward in your academic career. So read the chapter. Uh, do the reading that is listed on the daily schedule for the cause and effect essay. Pay attention to those pages I mentioned, 340, 341, and 342. They're going to be really helpful in helping you brainstorm and think about how a cause and effect essay should be put together. All right, get moving on that. Start processing all of those things for the cause and effect essay. You're also going to be submitting the final draft of your comparison and contrast. So we'll get that out of the way and then we can focus fully on the cause and effect and doing good research and using that research in your essay. All right, let's get to it.